Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range, and I'm here with Ian at uh, Loppy Shooting Centre, courtesy of Varastuleka and Sarko. It's literally a bloke on a range. Literally! And I'm going all a bit squee, because this <laughs> is the first ever What Would Stoner Do 2020 rifle to set foot in the European continent, brought here by Les Winner of Polaris World Lo Worldwide Logistics, and unfortunately it has to go back, and not with me. So, um, anyway, basically, People who follow the channel will know that I'm a big fan of the early AR M M16s, the light ones. In fact, the last Desert Brutality, you brought an M16, or you shot a Colt SP-1. Yes, and that was, uh, that was great. And uh, shortly after that, I bought an M16A1 blocked at semi to recreate that. Um, the only difference being forward assist. Um, because basically, they're great. Uh, <laughs> Stoner was right. There's things we've said, we've said in the past on the channel. And Ian's involved in the project. In range, it's an in, it's an in range Brownells KE Arms. Right. So it's an in range concept. Uh, it is being produced by KE Arms, and Brownells is our exclusive distributor. Yeah. And hopefully Brownells will be importing them in numbers into the European market. And I'm sure there'll be variations in barrel length because, like Germany, needs a bit more length and yep. things like that. So. Um, Probably the easiest thing is if you take us through the features, but the first thing that come that I spot is that it is super light. Yes. So what we did with this is we were trying to answer the question, if you were going to build the original M16 today, using the, the parts and the technology that we have today, what rifle would you end up with? If you're trying to meet the same design goals as the original M16, which is to say, very light, well-balanced, handy, it's not supposed to be a heavy suppressive fire weapon, it's supposed to be a lightweight carbon. Mm. Uh, and so we have polymer, we have carbon fiber, and we have technological innovations that simply weren't, they're things they tried to do in the 50s and 60s and didn't quite pull off. Yeah, some of the early AR-10 stuff they were doing was beyond the bleeding edge. It was exactly. way, like comp composite barrels, two-piece uh, two yeah. barrels and things like that, that, that they just couldn't do it. And what they ended up doing was the best they could with the bleeding edge materials of the day. And right. so we end up with the early AR-15s, M16s. So a couple of the most fundamental ones, and they're things that you can't necessarily see from the outside, but like we have a very light pencil weight barrel. Now, of course, the original M16 also had a very light pencil weight barrel. The problem was it wasn't heat treated as effectively as what we can do today. And so they developed this reputation for inaccuracy because when the thin barrel got hot, which didn't take that long, it would walk in random directions and you'd lose your zero. With the, the barrels that we have today, you can have that same profile, and when the barrel gets hot, the group size will open up a bit, but the zero does not change, mm. fixing a, a fundamental problem with the originals. And plus it's a free float, which the originals weren't. Right. Free float shoes were not a thing right. back then. Um, so it's free float, um, and it's an M-lock handguard, which means mm. you don't have the weight of quad rails over everything, you pick do, I, do you want to put on a bipod? Okay, you put one piece of Picatinny rail here or wherever you want the bipod. Do you want to mount a light? You can put a light on whichever side, wherever you want to have it. Uh, laser, basically any accessories you want to put on. In fact, we have a, a quick detach sling point right there. It all attaches to M-Lock so that you only have the weight and the bulk of the specific items that you want. And you might have spotted that it's polygonal. It's rounded polygonal, it's not a uh, cylindrical tube. Is, uh, was there a reason behind that? Uh, that's just to get the M-lock to, to properly dimension out. Okay, interesting. Um, let's just fi finish the upper, so it's a standard okay. flat top. Yep, standard flat top. Uh, we did not put iron sights on it. Of course, if you want to mount an iron sight, you can do that. But there are trade-offs. Having a rear iron sight takes up uh, a non-trivial amount of rail space where alternatively you could do something like a red dot and have space to have a, a quick removable night vision um, behind it, which you couldn't, you'll, you'll see pictures of some special forces, you know, top tier operator guys who don't have rear sights because they're mounting night vision. If you want a rear sight, put one on there by all means. Mm. And we have on here, we have Carl's little ACOG. I'm yeah. Interesting to see how this... A very cute little one and a half power ACOG. That's, yeah. That's been fun to shoot with. Yeah. So so there is no forward assist. There's a logo instead. Yes. <laughs> Opportunistic engraving. Um, there was real debate early on about the forward assist. The Army wanted it. The Air Force didn't. Um, we don't need to go into the whole argument, set of arguments pro and con, uh, but we decided it is a couple fewer parts. 
it's less weight, although not very much. Um, but there is an element of if it has a button, everyone will push the button. Mm. Does have a case deflector? Very. That is important for left-handed. Yes. Yep. Yes. Because um, the non, the pre-case deflector ones ejected about that angle. I've I've gotten carbon marks on my cheek shooting mm. uh, ARs without deflectors. So uh, up to now, it's all f it's all Faxon, isn't it? Uh, yes, the handguards are Faxon, um, at least on the initial batches. I don't know if we're going to stick with that permanently, but this, the pattern will stay the mm -hmm. same. Yep. Um, A2 closed bottom yep. birdcage. I'm, so, sure, I'm sure people will put brakes on these. Exactly. Our original 2017 rifle had a permanently pinned flash hider, and we decided, well, this is extra weight, um, and like there is no proper muzzle device to put on because no matter what muzzle device you choose, you're going to, 80% of people are going to want something different. So yeah. what we figured is we will leave the barrel threaded at a standard thread pitch so that people can attach whatever brake they want and be able to attach a suppressor. With our 2017 guns, there was no way to mount a suppressor and that is a shortcoming. Mm -hmm. um, big yes. charging handle. So the charging handle is extended and it is ambidextrous and harder there you go and it's strong enough clearly that you can one-side it yes that's that's half the intention um, we have made all the controls on this ambidextrous so the safety selector is ambidextrous and it is a 45 degree throw yeah oh that's nice and it can be engaged whether the hammer is cocked or fired yeah now that's an interesting thing that some militaries and some people don't like about the AR system that you can only put it on safe if the hammer's back right which it's one of those things, it's like, it's fine. You just learn to use it that way. But if you don't have to learn to use it that way, if it, it's one less specific, unusual thing that you have to teach someone. Mm -hmm. Instead, with a, a trigger like this, this is a KE Arms SLT trigger. You just, if you want to engage the safety, you engage the safety and you don't have to try and remember, especially as an, a novice shooter, you don't have to try and remember where is the hammer. Okay, and that's great. Yep, that is a PDQ lever. That allows you to operate the bolt hold open and bolt release uh, from the right side of the gun. That is brilliant because that's the one odd bit in the manual of arms on an AR type platform in standard configuration is you've got to press that little nub there. And the original AR-10 had a much bigger lever that worked both ways, but presumably that caught on kit and yeah. stuff. But it is a two-handed job to cock and hook, which now it isn't. It is not. And bolt release either conventionally like that or... So if you're right-handed, you put in a magazine with your left hand and then hit the bolt release. If you are left-handed, you put in a magazine and hit the bolt release. It's a, that's, that's neat. And there then, are other ambidextrous bolt release solutions for the AR, yeah. and they are generally terrible. This is by far the best one. And then we got an ambi, ambi mag catch. So left-handed, right-handed, want to do a right-handed manual of arms, left-handed manual of arms. Yep. So safety, charging handle, uh, bolt hold open, bolt release, magazine catch, all 100% ambidextrous. So the core of the system is the monolithic polymer Correct. KP15 lower. Um, this is, again, something that was tried early on uh, unsuccessfully. Um, Colt in the 70s built a receiver styled actually very much like this, where the buttstock, the pistol grip, and the lower receiver are all one monolithic unit. Um, there are other polymer receivers out there. Uh, as a general rule, they have been designed to simply copy a standard aluminum receiver in polymer. And as a result, they tend to be fragile, in particular right back here at the buffer tower. Uh, because this doesn't have any threading, it doesn't need any metal inserts because there's no threading. Uh, from an end user perspective, there's about six parts you don't have to acquire because they're already here. There is no uh, nut on the back of the buffer tube. There is no buffer tube. They're already built into this single original component. So are we are we captive? No. There is a spring detent, but it will pull all the way up. Okay. So let me just whoop, indeed. Yep. And hinge it open and there's We have a JP silent capture buffer spring. So you also we don't have a buffer retainer pin because yep. we don't need it, because the spring is captive. It does not make that sprung noise every time you fire in That your offends Chappie, who is just going, yes, behind the camera, because it really offends him for some reason. Um, um, but you can't just pop that out. You need to use an Allen. No, it comes it, right it out. Just... This one's a little tight. Oh, OK. OK. Ah, cool. I've never seen one of them. Yep. That's neat. 
Um, this does, the receiver uses a, car, a carbine length buffer system. Yeah. Uh, because there are, of course, uh, design considerations for polymer. And one of them is we need to have enough material at the back of the receiver to, uh, to be strong enough to withstand thousands of rounds of use. Yeah. And that means for an A1 length buttstock, which is what we have, we have a shorter carbon, uh, carbine gas or a carbine buffer length so that there's enough material back here. Okay. And then we've got two MLOX slots there. And yep. I guess at a pinch, if you wanted to be a bit retro, you could pass a sling through with a Absolutely. keeper. Yeah. Yep. And then we've got spots for uh, standard quick release uh, sling points right oh. there in the stock if you would prefer that. Already in there. Yep. Nice. So you put the, the metal hardware in yourself and, and you're good to go. And then chromed. We have a young manufacturing chromed bolt carrier. This is another thing that was tried early in the M16. The problem when this was originally done is that the chrome lining process wasn't, or the chrome plating process wasn't really up to spec. If my AR-10 was chromed. Um, and they had trouble with the chrome flaking off. Yeah. Again, we have better manufacturing processes now. Uh, chrome is super easy to clean. We really like chrome. Uh, Rather than nitriding or any of the other yeah. fancy... Uh... I wouldn't say that chrome is necessarily, you know, hugely improved over nitriding, um, mm. but it has... It has some nice advantages to it um, over a lot of less substantial processes. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those elements that they tried early on that was a good idea, mm -hmm. and now we can do it properly. Okay. And I guess the last feature is, ob obviously it is a stoner type in the bolt group gas system. Correct. Mid-length. Yeah. Which is ob the, obviously the way forward if you're having a less than 20-inch barrel. Right. Yep. Standard uh, barrel length on this is 16 inches. Yep. So... Uh, like you said at the beginning, uh, we have every intention of running these in Europe, and I don't have specific plans yet, but I know uh, there are some countries where it's much more popular to have a 12 and a half or a 14 and a half inch barrel. There are some countries where the legal situation ma mandates more like 18 inches. So. Yeah. So I've been itching to put some rounds through this. <laughs> well, so we I'm, have I'm, targets. I'm, I'm, I'm going to. You're on a range. Yes. It's, it is so light. Let me just put my earplugs in. We've got some half size, two thirds size plates down there at about whoa, 75, 80 yeah, meters. About 80, 80 meters. We've got some P mags and it's got a flared magwell. Yep. I'm going to shoot some offhand and then I'm going to see how fast I can ring the plate off of, <laughs> off of here. Oh. It's a bit oily, so I'm getting the usual smoke gets in your eyes thing. <laughs> so let me. That is beautiful. And um, I'm a fan of a full length, full length uh, tube. There was a fashion a while back for tucking up tight. Those people were wrong. <laughs> this is definitely the way forward. I'm over-egging it a bit on the speed, because it's fun, but the recoil impulse, something Ian was doing at uh, the remains of, of uh, Finnish Brutality, was holding it one-handed. Now that makes sense, you were only at, We're only about 50 meters. Yeah, we were closer. But, uh, let us just see. There you go. There we go. It's not a, there's, there's more to it than just the, num, the weight number on a piece of paper. Uh, the balance is such that you can easily shoot one-handed uh, because the gun just balances nicely in the center. Yeah, I mean, let's just do that once more. If I take my time and do yeah. good trigger control. Yeah, obviously it's harder to shoot because you have one less point of stability yeah. on the gun. But it, this is beautiful weight. The recoil impulse for the weight is superb. Is well balanced. It's a well balanced action. Everything about it is well proportioned, well balanced. The short, shorter A1 buck stop, butt stop length was always better. Right. The A, the A2 is adds an, adds another inch or so, and it's always just a little bit too long. I love it. I suspect Wonderful. that I shall be buying one of these <laughs> when they're available in Europe. 
So, uh, do you want a black chappy? No, no. No? I don't oh. want to spoil the... Anyway, so, unload and show clear, entirely facilitated yep. by yep. that little lever. Looks good. It's clear, hammer down, open action. So, there you go. I hope that was at least vaguely interesting. Thank you so much. My pleasure. For, uh, for agreeing to talk us through the features. It it's seemed been very exciting to finally get this is, all the way to reality. Um, and uh, yeah, there's some content on uh, in range, torturing this a bit, which we're gonna film in a minute. And uh, yeah, basically I'm super excited about this. If you are into practical shooting with AR type rifles, I think this is just brilliant. Um, I'm everything from the concept up. I mean, when, when, when you guys first announced it, I was like, ooh, <laughs> I, I'm gonna probably want one and I definitely want one now. I like lightweight, easy to run, uh, I, I would point out that we did not sacrifice everything for weight. Yeah. There are plenty of elements like uh, we do not use a lightweight bolt carrier group, which yeah. is something that people will often do to get just a few more ounces out of a gun. But that, that action is so well balanced with a full weight yeah. that it doesn't need it. Right. I mean, the, there was a while back that tendency to just machine all the metal off of the buffer and the, and the bolt carrier. And I think that's a mistake for, for serious reliability. Yeah. So, thanks for watching, thanks to patrons who made it possible for us to be out here. Thanks again to Verastalika and uh, Sarko for sponsoring the remains of uh, Finnish Brutality 2021, and uh, see you again sometime. Bye!